Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are back with Von Gulp. Hey, how's it going, Von? Hey, thanks for having me back again. So yeah. happy to be here. Yeah, this is awesome. So today we're going to dive deeper into what the heck is going on with the Earth's Schumann frequency. Um, we, uh, we're bringing back, of course, Buddhist author Von Gulp, who has been studying the ascension of Earth for the last 40 years through her Buddhist background, metaphysic, academic research, and QHHT research, which we all love, Dolores Cannon here. She discusses how Earth is also shifting into another reality and how more Mandela effects and faster manifestations will occur for those working on their awakening and ascension with Earth. She also gives us insight on how the awakening ceremonies done by many indigenous tribes in Buddhist monasteries in 2011 and 2012 contribute to humanity's transformation into oneness and how this return of Maitreya Buddhahood or Christ consciousness ushers us into the golden age of galactic humanity for the next thousand years. And it does sound like a fun ride indeed. <laughs> so I'm going to explain every one of those sentences because they touch on big topics each sentence touches on a big topic. So for your viewers that are have not, uh, that I'm new to, let me just give them a quick background. Um, so I, um, I, I'm Laotian. I was raised in the spiritual tradition of Buddhism for the last 40 years, even though I don't look like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last 40 years, when you're higher frequency, you don't, you don't age as quickly. So, so you're not counting a previous life then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so um, for the last 40 years, I've been studying, um, you know, Tibetan and Mahayana Buddhism. And for a very long time, I would just use the principles for my own inner wellness to manifest with, with you know, consciousness and the studies in that spiritual tradition. And about 20 years ago, um, many Buddhist monks um, that I was following, um, such as the Dalai Lama and many other prominent ones, started the initiative to work with academia to get information out about mindfulness, meditation, consciousness, to kind of help um, get more information to see if how much of this is true and um, and just kind of prove metaphysics is not fringe science or pseudoscience, but it is really our every day and it does change your reality. And so, and so early on in that research, um, it was kind of new, but now there's so much research that it's, it's kind of like suffocated everybody <laughs> with all this research, and it is coming into the fold. However, um, in the, the last 20 years of following the, the academic research in med meditation and metaphysics, one of the aspects um, that I looked into was a lot of different energy healing modalities. So I'm very familiar with energy healing, like Reiki from the Buddhist um monk from Japan who started Reiki, Sh Qigong in China. I'm very familiar with a couple other energy healing modalities of the East. But um, there were many Western doctors that were tapping into the gamma ray frequency of energy healing and creating their own modalities. And I tried a couple of them as well. But I ended up settling with um, Dolores Cannon for one primary reason. Um, and I got certified about five years ago and have been doing it ever since. And the thing that I liked about Dolores Cannon's QHHT modality was that it allowed me the opportunity to have a direct conversation with the Overso about my research in terms of the ascension of earth and humanity and the clients and what their um, abundance blocks and you know issues with the wheel of Dharma in their incarnation was what's holding them back from raising their frequency. Um, and so that's a little bit about my background. I, um, 
wrote, oh, I think between 2011 to 2012, I had a lot of sleepless nights, like four hours a night of sleep because I was, um, I started to take all that research and started to use it to write blog articles that I tested on my Facebook at the time, uh, which are, if you if you look up 2011 to 2012 on my Facebook timeline, um, it's all public, so you can still see that. And it, it had lots and lots of um, hundreds and thousands of shares. And I was just testing to see if this information was interesting to put into a book. And it proved to be pretty interesting. Um, the thing that I did not... Um, factor in was I did not expect other people to have awakenings. I just thought it was just me and just to play to play play with it. Oh, just right, I forgot about that. Oh. I just you know I would just wipe it away. Um, and then I started seeing more people have awakenings. Um, and started to be a resource for them. I actually, at the time when more people started having awakenings about a decade ago, um, I reached out to a physicist um, who started, she wrote her first book, uh, Cynthia Sue Larson. Oh yeah, definitely. We yeah, love so she, Cynthia. <laughs> yeah, so she started her first book and I reached out, I looked around to see who was talking about this stuff um, in Western and I reached out to her and, and asked her, why is everybody else, it was just me, why is everybody else having this? Uh, and it's even happening even more. And so she enlightened me about kind of mass awakening. I was like, oh, I had no clue that my um, my my spiritual tradition, that stuff was actually going to come into play. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, um, you know, as a child, you know, when you say, oh, yeah, you know, if you, um, you create your reality and your thoughts and your actions and your consciousness create your reality and you're going to go into a parallel reality that's going to be in line with your frequency and your angels and your guides are going to work with you through synchronicity. That was just nonsense talk to a lot of people. Right. So when things just kind of happen, I would just kind of, you know, just put it away. But now people are having mass awakenings. So it's a, it, like my 40 years of studying the ascension of Earth um, became relevant. Um, but one of the reasons why I am doing interviews like this is because, um, you know, after, 20, after 2012, I uh, moved on. I had got married. I had two children. I moved back onto my life. Other people were doing wonderful work like yourself and others. And then my sessions, I started getting archangels come through my QHHT sessions asking wow. me to come back into this work. And I argue with them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I argue with them um, <laughs> because the last time, <laughs> two years or four hours of sleep every night was not making me a very happy person. So <laughs> Right. I agree. I will. I will do my bit to provide the information, um, you know, as much as I can. But it is a balancing act with you know being, me being a working mom in IT, and also I have um, books that are sitting there waiting to be finished. Right. So, so that's why I'm here to you know <laughs> provide information about the shift. And it's amazing because it's it's really been talked about in in various ways in various religions and cultures and everything, and it's really cool. This is a very exciting time to be alive to see to to see all of this coming together, just like everyone talked about, you know. Yeah. So I mean, you know, um, between between twenty ten to twenty twelve, up until to twenty twelve, there was a lot of indigenous tribes around the world that were doing awakening ceremonies. Mm -hmm. um, with frequencies and harmonics and um, like the Native American Council of Elders, the chief of the Polynesian Islands, the chiefs of the Easter Island, um, the um, Mayan tribe of elders. Um, there were still indigenous tribes that kept this knowledge about the end of the cycle of polarity and the beginning of the cycle of unity consciousness or oneness or Christ consciousness in the West is what they would uh, recognize it as. And um, the last one were um, Buddhist, Buddhism and um, like the 14 Dalai Lama and many Buddhist monasteries worldwide in 2011 did awakening ceremonies and they would, you know, have these huge bells that almost look like it's from Star Trek. It's the size of like uh, a floor height building and they would mm. ring it and it's like the biggest tuning fork. So all of these indigenous tribes that kept this knowledge and have not 
it has been wiped out through colonization, at the same time started doing these awakening ceremonies to send out that frequency and usher in um, the new golden age of a galactic humanity for the next thousand years. That's how the, the folklores go with all these different indigenous tribes. Do they um, do that at the same time, the bells? Because that could definitely affect the human resonance. I mean, that's, you know what I mean? Just if it's all around the globe and they ring it at the same time, that's adding to that resonance of the earth, you know? Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, so all of them did the um, awakening ceremonies right around the same time or in sync or, you know, I'm not really sure the exact dates, but right around right. the same, you know, 2011 to 2012. Um, some did a little bit earlier. But um, basically, they did all of that and then they um they waited they waited for earth they, they did the part they waited for earth mm -hmm. to see what happens and um we know this in science when you follow the schumann residents and so people who are not familiar with schumann residents just to give a brief background um um, the Institute of Noetic Sciences that was founded by um, Apollo 14 astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who started that, um, and his initiative was to work with scientists and academia to bring metaphysics into the fold. Um, so, it, it, and that institute still does that. They helped sponsor the HeartMath Institute that measures the frequency and energy of the human um, heart, which they found is a 5,000 times more powerful than your brain. So mm -hmm. you can feel it when somebody is like of high frequency and they are emitting a certain um, energy from their heart. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so those institutions sponsored the build at Princeton University of the what they call the Global Consciousness Project. And what they did was they put these, like at the time, when they first started in 1998 was when I first started following it. And they didn't have much data because a lot of things didn't happen for a long time. Um, what the uh, the random number generators that they set yeah. up all over, right? Yeah. yeah, so they put like seventy, and they have a, a, a little bit more, but they will put these random number generators in different parts of the Earth. Oh, did we lose you? I think we might have lost you, Vaughn. You're frozen. We'll give her a second to come back. I will pick up where she left off because this is actually pretty interesting because the work done with the global uh, initiative, global, I'm going to mess up the name of it because, oh, there you are. Are you back? Yeah. Okay. I see so There we go. You are just a little bit glitchy, but I think you're, you're back now maybe. Okay. In the, uh, in the suburbs of Washington, so the wind... Wait one second, because you're 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 breaking up on me. Let's see okay. if I can get you back here. I can see. You. Really? Am I frozen for you? No. You're just you're just in and out. Um, let me see if it gets better here in a second. But yeah, I think this is a really important topic that you're talking about. I don't want anybody to miss this because I think it was so cool when uh, I think 9/11 was the first event I saw that had happened with these global these random number generators all over the earth and they could see it changing like, I don't know, 12 hours before it happened or, or you know, it was the night before in the middle of the night, these random number generators, which are, are just basically an electronic coin flip, basically. So they should get something that's close to 50% all of the time, but then it starts to kind of veer off of that 50% point and they know some kind of anomalies happening for yeah. the global consciousness to be affecting it in that way. Right. And, and then a big event will usually follow at the peak of it. I think the peak of these anomalies with the random number generators was like right around the time the tower collapsed or something along those lines. Yeah. So um, so just to, j just to go back to what I was saying. So, yes, exactly. So there was like 70 or more random number generators. And they kind of... They kind of measure the magnetics of the earth, kind of like a like they measure earthquakes and seismology. Mm -hmm. It's a technology. But basically what happens is the earth's heartbeat, her frequency is 7.83 hertz. Okay. And it's been like that for a very long time, for millions of years. So when they started this project of monitoring um, the heartbeat of earth to see is 
are we linked to the earth? Does she has a does she have a consciousness? Um, you know, you know, do we impact her? Does she impact us? And so they want to try out the science science project. And um, what basically end up happening is whenever um, the number generators start organizing, what is picking up is the heart frequency of people in that area that's mm -hmm. close to that located our uh, random number generator. So you have people in India, in um, in the states, in different parts of the world. And when it organizes, what it's saying is um, something is going to happen because all these people, like animals who can tell when an earthquake is going to happen before mm -hmm. it happens, all these people are having um, heart anxiety or whatever, and so something's going to happen. And it usually does. So mm -hmm. and it has to be a very, very impactful event. So like um, in... In uh, like India, it will forecast um, earthquakes or major disasters is going to happen. Um, in um, it, it predicted Katrina before it happened. It predicted 9/11. Just really impactful events. And at 9/11, um, it, it's funny because I actually had dreams about 9/11 two days before it happened, uh, and a lot of people did show that these RNG generators were picking up people's anxiety mm -hmm. before it ever happened. So what does that mean? So let me explain how what this means. So when you go and you look at the graph of um, the Global Consciousness Project for how they measure different events, um, basically there's a blue line. And when it hits that blue line is when she's spiking. If it doesn't hit that blue line, um, it's, she's not interested in the, su the subject. It hasn't really, it hasn't mm -hmm. really kind of gotten her out of bed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's not interesting. So that's how you drink it. So, um, but basically, when she was 7.83 hertz for a very long time, at 9-11, she spiked. In 2014, she spiked to um, 15 hertz to 30 hertz, which was big. When, you, when you're when you 7.83 hertz for millions of years and all of a sudden something's happening, it you know, a lot of these scientists get excited. <laughs> so they're like, right. oh, yeah, data. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and so some, some awakenings start happening from some people. Um, and then in 2017, it, it hit again, um, was 36 hertz at the Women's March and um, other events happening in the West because the West is very focused on changes for themselves. And so more people in 2017 had awakenings. In 2020, which is where we're at right now, this month it has hit up to 50 hertz. So what does this mean when I'm talking about hertz? <clears throat> the way you can understand this is if, like let's take a TV, okay? An old TV is gonna have 24 hertz or 24 frames per second. And you can see the picture quality is kind of slow. And when it changes picture, you can see that it's changing. So it's kind of a low frequency TV. But when you upgrade to a TV that's newer, that has maybe 60 hertz to 120 hertz, it's 60 frames to 120 frames per second. So the picture quality is much higher, much more pixelated. Things change from frame to frame so much faster so that you can't really catch the nuances of things changing. So Very smooth, yeah. It's a smooth picture. And so when the earth has her, um, her, her leaps from you know, the different levels of hertzes that she goes on, what basically happens is the picture is changing so fast that you can't catch these changes in real time like you used to. Mm -hmm. Like I used to be able to, years ago, see like a billboard go whoop, whoop, and then some of my friends, and then we would do like, oh, you know, we would, we would have a great time over that. But now, now you can't really see that as much because the picture is changing so fast. And so how you know that you're having, you're changing to another reality is you have what these call Mandela effects where now you see, now you don't. <laughs> right. Something new that you never saw before because you see the picture slowly change because the picture quality has gotten better. And for people who are of higher frequency, who are working on their awakening and who are working on ascending their levels of consciousness, they are matching or trying to match her frequency. And as they match her frequency, because she's shifting to a whole new reality, uh, into um, a 5D reality, 
um, they are going to go with her. And the people who aren't raising their level of consciousness and working on their ascension work um, by having their personal awakening that they are the user that's manifesting, attracting to them, the, you know, what they are, um, you know, the reality is just reflecting back to you or to you what you are so you're the user that changes everything so anyways so if you're ha if you're doing that work you're going to catch up with her um if you're not doing that work then you're you're going to stay in a lower vibration and you're going to stay in a reality that's a lower vibration and it's not going to be accelerating as much um and that golden age um that unity consciousness exists in a 5d level of consciousness and that's where the earth is going and she's very very patient she gave everybody a second chance because mm -hmm. um, there was people who were so so close so things are very polarizing right now to kind of force you to decide which frequency you want to be in do you want to be integrous and courageous and you know you know align with those things in your life or do you not because you you kind of have to start walking your talk I'm so glad you said that because I come across a lot of people, you know, with the Mandela Effect community that I'm, that I'm involved with that uh, they're just like, I just want to go back to my old reality. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. You want to you want to move with the shift. I mean, things are shifting. I think it's a positive thing. And I mean, if, as soon as you can sort of let go of the old, I mean, so many of us are carrying this baggage around that we've just, you know, sort of had heaped on us by either our parents or a teacher or a, a religious leader or something. And I think it's time for us to just let that stuff go and, and just, you know, because it's just holding us back at this point, you know. And so many people want to go back to the old reality. And I'm like, look forward, you know. And, I, and the, even there's a scripture, Jesus, that said something like, you know, whoever puts their hands to the plow and looks back isn't fit for the kingdom or something. That sounds kind of harsh. But I mean, uh, it's and it's okay if you want to go back to that reality, if you want to stay in the low, lower vibe, that's totally cool too. It's not like you're going to be damned and punished for eternity in hell or anything. <laughs> it's just like, you know, you'll sit in this grate for a while longer and then move on in the future when you are ready, right? Is yeah. that kind of how you see it too? Yeah, and that's that's how that's how it is in Buddhism because mm -hmm. you know the different levels, um, you know it's like it's like kindergarten is no better than middle school is no better than high school is no better than college. Okay, they each have their own hum and they each have sweetness in, in every single level. Okay, um, so you're going to get exactly what is um, the experience that you're supposed to get. And for some people, they're ready to graduate to the next level and have better, higher experiences. And for others. Living in that level of frequency is just too much for them, and so they just want to go back to what they know, which is fine. Maybe another lifetime they'll get to the point where they can um, get to a, a level of consciousness in which um, this is comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. It's like if you take somebody and you put them many levels up into another classroom that they're not ready for, they're going to fail and they're going to have a miserable time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so there's n nothing is better. Or Just like high school. If you're a middle schooler and they stick you in high school or college, you're going to be like, what the heck? This is horrible, right? <laughs> yeah, you're just not ready for that. So, um, so that's what, that's what's going on with the shoe in frequency. And so she is shifting to a different reality. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with third dimension. There's nothing wrong with fourth dimension. Everybody's going to get their set. And we, we really just need to get over our fear of death. That's, really that's a huge one. They really, yeah. because um, especially in my regressions, um, you know, a lot of my, the people that I, that I get are very old souls that have came here to, um, you know, help with the ascension and awakening. And they're at the part in their level of consciousness that they're ready to kind of learn and grow with the ascension of earth and the universe. And um, when they, when they come in, they basically are just looking to, you know, what's my button spots? What are the things holding down my frequency that I need to um, find clarity, forgive, let go, and so I can lighten myself up? Because you have to be um, lighter, kind of light as a, as a feather. You have to not have any any baggage holding you back to the third dimension. So if you work on the abundance, block, abundance blocks and your unbalanced perspective on things, then those things are not going to weigh you down anymore and your energy will be what it was when it came into this experience. Mm -hmm. High radiating, loving, and um, just very abundant. But, um, and by doing that, you are you are changing your consciousness. And basically when, when um, when they did the indigenous um, awakening ceremonies, um, it was usher ending the cycle of polarity and ushering in a new energy 
um, the energy is of unity consciousness. So if you if you look at a lot of scientific evidence now, um, they've shown that we are all connected. The the global consciousness shows that we're all one. We're all connected. In um, in my regressions, you can go go into that, and the spirit world is connected to everybody else. We're all connected. So and there's so many different ways to to know that we're all connected, and we're all one anyways in this this whole experience. But um it you know what what people need to understand is, is they think that um okay we're gonna go to fifth dimension i'm gonna check out i'm gonna quit my job i don't need to do anything you know and it, <laughs> this is not armageddon okay <laughs> so, um and you know that that's 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 not how it is what is changing is your perspective on things are changing because the frequency is so high that you are the, the veil is lifting and you're able to see your connection to everything else and to everyone else and so your 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 way of being of being separate from one another and seeing separatism um no longer is something that you hold on to anymore because for some reason you just change your your viewpoint or more open-minded to things that like that. So when you change your energy, um, what happens is when you transition into the Christ consciousness, Maitreya Buddhahood, you know, all, all these different terms for oneness, when you change that, then you change your energy. And by changing your energy and your perspective on things, your actions start following that consciousness. And so when you're when you're doing things, you're much more inclusive of people. Um, when you're working on something at work, uh, because you know this affects everybody, everybody's connected, you put more integrity and workmanship into your work so that you put a good product and something good that is reflective of you that, that's going to enrich somebody's life. Um, you put your you put your heart into the food that you make so that um, they they get a good experience, not just put some pieces of um, bad food out there and <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you, know, you like it, you don't like it, I don't care. You know, um, they're just more integrous. And yeah. um, these are the effects of people who are um, of higher frequency and see the oneness in everybody else. Isn't it amazing that when you do shift like that, it seems like your world begins to shift around you just from your own perspective shifting? I mean, it's it's really quite amazing. And then the people you seem to run into, you're like, you start to feel like maybe you showed up late to the party. You're like, wait, like all these people are awake and aware of all these things I'm figuring out now. And I don't know, it's just like you really do seem to magnetize or draw into yourself where you're at, you know? So I guess if, if you're really low vibe all the time, you're constantly sort of bringing that to yourself, you know, and, and when you begin to shift upwards, you'll notice that your vibration changes and you begin to draw in these higher vibe people as well. Yeah. It's amazing the way it works. Yeah. And, you know, and the thing is, is that, and they've, and they've, and they found this also, um, not just in Buddhism, but they, um, they found this also when they're studying um, the Schumann frequency, that when they start looking at whenever she does her spikes, and they look at history, what happens is um, it's almost like an amplifier. So like a magnet, you know, we're all energy and we're responding to each other. But the biggest magnet that affects us is the earth. And so when she changes her frequency, it really affects us in a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, actually, um, Dr. Hawkins, um, a, the, the, a top mental health uh, doctor who spent his life mapping out the levels of consciousness of different people and things have found in his work that there's an offshoot of humanity that is going to be happening and he calls it homo spiritus <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> homo spiritus and we are getting an upgrade in our nervous system and um because for most people in the um the 3d physical body that we have it can't hold these high levels of energy you know when you get to five six seven hundred eight hundred it can't hold these high levels of energy so in order to have a 3d experience um you know we are getting upgrade and the way you upgrade somebody is to change their frequency so a harmonic tuning for a little by little changes everybody's frequency and their nervous system starts changing as well Mm. And they've done this with um, with um, sound 
science where they would play certain frequencies to animals and they would actually change their cosmology wow. playing that frequency so um, they will get an egg of a chicken and then play the heartbeat of a duck and a duck will be born <laughs> <laughs> okay i've heard about that also shooting the laser through one type of embryo and and the light carries the dna over and then it changes it and i've heard of and these sorts of anything things. physical all they did was send the energy of another genetic code in right. the embryo, it changed the embryo. That's amazing. So when Earth changes her frequency and she does these leaps to higher and higher frequencies, um, it's going to change our bodies and it's going to change our nervous system so that we can be, um, we can be more present, but be homo spiritus like Dr. Hawkins says. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, you know, but it's going to take some adjusting. And like you said earlier, once you are awakened, um, you kind of can't go back. Right. <laughs> because you're, you feel like you're cheating yourself. But let me, you know, the thing that people um, people ask all the time is, what's this whole point? Well, then why are we doing this? Why, you know, the thing is, is that um, Everyone who who is coming here is they're at a point in the level of consciousness to have the personal awakening, and kind of understand um, the rule book of the game. And the rule book is that you're the one that's creating it and attracting to yourself. And so, um, like I said, when Earth increases the frequency, she's an amplifier. She's like this huge tuning fork, so it brings up everything. So if you're if you're higher frequency and, and you're then you're gonna be more creative, you're gonna be more positive, more positive things are gonna happen to you. You're gonna have an easy time whenever she does her, her leaps. Um, if you are um, negative, you're gonna bring more negativity to you, you're gonna attract more accidents, more illnesses because you're amplifying whatever energy you are. And when they mapped history against the spikes in the Schumann resonance, they found that um, humanity had a lot of renaissances during yeah. the time. At the same time, it had a lot of conflict and war. So the people who are high frequency are, are attracting to self more of that high frequency and the people who are low are attracting more low. But um, the thing is, is that what's different that they found with this project that is that it's never gone to these highs before. You know, uh, 7.83 to 50 hertz is a really big jump. And she keeps on jumping bigger and bigger leaps. And so because she's never done it before in history, they're going, well, what's going on? And basically what's going on is what a lot of the indigenous tribes have been saying is that we're splitting into a parallel reality that is of higher frequency. And they've shown this in science, um, like, uh, they did the double split experiment mm -hmm. um, where they showed that, uh, and they did this thousands of times in quantum mechanics all over the world in different universities. And what they found is that two exact atoms can exist um, in two different places and still communicate with each other. Right. <laughs> so what does that mean? We're all atoms. That means we have multiple versions of ourselves in parallel realities and we can still communicate with each other. So you might all of a sudden have a change of thought and be like, you know what, I don't think that's a really good idea. Well, it's probably coming from your other self in another reality is telling you, hey, that was not a good idea. I did not like that experience. So, you know, that could be happening to people as well. Um, you know, the concept of multiverses, Dr. Steven Weinberg, you know, who won the Nobel Prize for proving and talking about multiverses, have shown that as well. But then also, um, you know, a team of military remote viewers from um, Dr. Um, I think Dr. Courtney Brown of the Farsight Institute. He spent much of his um, career, and I think he's still doing it. And for remote viewing. For remote viewing for the mm -hmm. military, the U.S. military. Um, so the U.S. military team of remote viewers that he was um, doing found that after 2013, there was two separate timelines. Mm. One of higher frequency and one of lower frequency. So, um, you know, I mean, even like the D wave, um, you know, it, it started off with um, D wave systems in Canada, but because they have sh shown it in, in, um, in, in beta, uh, a lot of companies like 
like NASA and Google and other companies are coming in trying to re replicate the D-Wave into a bigger scale for their own purpose because mm -hmm. they don't want to start experiments that are going to fail. And so what they want to do is they want to pump in a bunch of questions to the computer, search the internet for the answers. And because the internet is not 3D, it's just energy. <clears throat> They're getting the answers from the internet and they're getting answers to questions uh, or pro so, you know, proposals that they have for different ideas that they want to do um, that don't exist in our reality, that don't exist, um, people and ideas that don't exist in our reality. And so um, the D-Wave computer is just basically pulling this information from parallel realities that are pumping in their information through their internet. It's almost like the wave of probability of what could be. I mean, and when you think of it in those terms, it's like limitless Yeah. what, what information you could pull in. Yeah. I mean, an idea that somebody didn't do in this reality exists somewhere else, and that computer can go grab it and say, hey, they never did it in this reality. Do it here. Yeah, you know? do, it, do it here. Or mm -hmm. maybe you, you're thinking like like uh, Google is really invested in a D-Wave. NASA is really invest, invested in uh, trying to duplicate a D-Wave for themselves. Um, the first customer was the U.S. military, but there's all these tech firms that are going in trying to replicate it for their own, um, their own purposes so that they don't spend a lot of money um, on uh, futile projects. So anyways, um, that's been proven in technology that there's parallel realities. And you know what is funny? I was just watching Space Odyssey <laughs> and mm -hmm. in the old movie Space Odyssey and there's this black monolith, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. in all different timelines. And wouldn't it be funny if the black mono monolith in Space Odyssey was a D-Wave computer? <laughs> oh, yeah, really? <laughs> I've often thought about that at the Mecca Cube that they always walk yeah. around. I'm like, what if that was a big D-Wave computer? Yeah. What if that was a D-Wave computer? <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. But anyways, the point is, is that um, the debate, you know, of do we exist in multiple realities? Is there multiple dimensions? That's kind of over now because they've already proven it in science and technology that yeah. there are parallel realities and the parallel versions of us. And so um, the Earth is a consciousness as well, and she is ascending and raising her frequency as well. And when she makes these jumps, um, people who are catching up to her will, you know, go go um, with her to that parallel reality, and others who don't will. Stay in the reality that they're in and that's perfectly fine everybody's getting the lessons and the experience that's matching their level of consciousness and their frequency but um but yeah it's just all it comes down to is just just work on yourself and work on living the best version of yourself and work on your inner work um and just try to manifest the the best life that you can for yourself. That's really what all it comes down to. And by by people stop trying to copy other people and be somebody else that they're not, mm -hmm. by them being the best version of themselves, they provide a little piece of the puzzle that other people can take and then they take it to the next level. So um, that's, that's really what it's all about. I wanted to say uh, April Lunsford in chat is saying that she's loving your book. Uh, also, Jason with QR East says to tell you hello. Oh, hello. And, uh, okay, so to build on what you were saying, because I love this. I, I love, you know, with QHHT and some of these other modalities, how you, you can see these trends. And you can really see how we're connected because you might have one client that doesn't know your next client. Yet, when you get into communications with this higher consciousness, you can tell you're continuing a conversation. That's one of the things that I loved about Dolores Cannon's books when I read them is she would talk about being on one side of the planet, having this conversation with the higher consciousness, and then continuing it with, through another client on the other side of the planet, and they didn't know each other. So you know that they weren't colluding and saying, well, she said this and this and this, and it wasn't public or anything, you know. Right. So the trends, the trends, and, and we talked about this right before we went on the air, that uh, one of the trends that's going around is for everyone to find their bliss, their happiness, whatever it is that makes them feel the most high vibe, and that sort of helps you, I guess, acclimate to these energies coming in, whether it's yeah. gardening or artwork or whatever, you know. Right, right. So, you know, the thing, because um, what you're touching on is you're touching on synchronicities. And basically, yeah. um, you know, 
just a short for people who are not familiar with synchronicity. Synchronicity is basically events that seem related, but there's no direct connection. So you might pick up the phone and somebody um, who you want to talk to all of a sudden calls you. You didn't communicate, but somehow they, they had known. Um, in Buddhism, it's basically soul groups working together to make connections for you. Um, but However, it's up to you to discern if you want that sign or not. So when you are awakening and you raise your level of consciousness to a higher frequency, um, what you're doing also is you're opening yourself up to your angels, your spirit guides, your soul groups to work with you. And what they will work with you is through synchronicity. Like angel numbers, repeat numbers, um, putting the next thing that you're supposed to, that you were working on right into your into your uh, field of vision so that, you know, you can take that next step. So it's almost like they're putting building blocks for you and lining them up. But you have to be in the frequency for and, and open for them to, to do the work. But if you're still asleep and you haven't woken to the greater reality, um, then you're still kind of spinning your wheels and not knowing that um, you create your reality and the frequency that you send out is what sends whatever it is you're working it on back to you. So basically, um, this, your spirit world is also really, it is kind of frustrating for them to watch you spin your wheels. Um, mm -hmm. I'm bringing back to you more negativity, more um, stuck issues and experiences. But when you actually start doing the opposite and living a higher level of consciousness, then you actually give them the invitation to be part of your life. And when you let them be part of your life um, at, by doing your awakening work, um, working on your inner demons, working on your dark night of the soul, you know, spiritual work is not always um, flowers. It actually mm -hmm. brings up your issues. So a lot of people are really spiritual going, I'm supposed to be spiritual, but why is all these old issues coming up in my life? Because right. it is for you. It, these are your abundance blocks, and it is for you to a address them all as one, as which some people could do all as one, as one holistic thing. Uh, many other people need to work on them one at a time to understand why they happen, to have clarity, and so they can let go of that energy. So how figure out why they're getting triggered by whatever is triggering them. And, I, and one of the things that I noticed that, uh, I mean, you're sort of talking about people that aren't really awake and people that are awake, but then there's the awakened that can get distracted. You know, a lot of us will get distracted by maybe it could be a bill or it could be, you know, the politics that's going on of the day or, or you know, natural disasters going on. And we can get so wrapped up in that stuff that we drop our vibes in the same way, too, you know, and, and lose that connection that we would normally have. So that's really where I see it, it happening amongst the awakened. Yeah, so to speak, we, get, we get pulled back down to everybody else's um, little um, experiences. Now, you, I mean. You know, the, the thing that the thing with uh, Mahayana Buddhism or Tibetan Buddhism or whatever you want to call it. But the thing with Buddhism is basically um, all of these experiences are preparing you for the, the final doorway. Mm -hmm. And a very small number of people who are doing this work is ready for the final doorway. Mm -hmm. right? um, but. And it's okay just to get to the point where you um, are experiencing your awakening, you're experiencing your ascension, you're living a wonderful life, you're attracting to you. I mean, that's fine too. But basically, like in Buddhism, um, the concept of the final doorway is this um, in the whole in the whole game. I'm just the answer to the whole game that everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. you know how do we get off this mm -hmm. middle dharma? How do we get off this game? <laughs> so, um, if you want to get off this game, um, like like the map of consciousness, a thousand is the highest level that um, most people can handle in the body before the, the body can't handle that much energy anymore. Um, but basically, you're awakening, knowing that you know you are the user manifesting to yourself. Um, you're matching reality. Um, your ascension process, um, synchronicities, you're working with angels and having them be part of your everyday life um, and your spirit guides and your soul groups and ancestors. Um, learning from enlightened teachers, um, even, you know, different modalities like energy healing, like um, QHHT, Enrique, Qigong, even channeling. Those are all just further confirmations that this is all a holographic reality and you're playing this big game. Um, you're, you're playing with the fullness of creation and you're coming back into all these different lifetimes, um, you know, to, to experience the fullness of creation. However, however, um, 
the game is the game of polarity. Okay, and in order to have for the universe, the universe of one mind in Buddhism to have its experience and expand itself, it needed to expand into all these different facets, all these different people, men, women, children, animals, whatever, all these different forms of creation. And it created the physical world for these souls to incarnate into and have their personal experience by having an ego, so they can have the personal experience and then raise uh, and evolve spiritually. And by creating a physical world in which souls incarnate into to experience the fullness of creation, it created the opposite, which is the spirit world, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, basically the spirit world, your angels, your guides, all the archangels, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, even some of the hardest things is even like people in order for you to be you who you are they had to be your loved ones other people who can reflect back to you that you are who you are they need to be a separate entity a polarization just to have mm -hmm. your own individual experience and so basically these are all just examples of the game of polarity but what happened because we are all one and we are all unity consciousness with the oversoul or um, the, the one universal mind, um, the Lord actually gave humans the power to return home by um, letting go of his ego and the game of polarity and reabsorbing back into the eternal energy of the one mind. Okay, and that's really, really hard. And there's, there's, you know, to do because, um, you know, many like, and there are very few people in history actually to like, like Yeshua, Kuan Yin, Jesus, I um, mean, um, Buddha, and so many different others, um, in history. But what happens when somebody decides? I think I've had enough of experiencing all of these different incarnations and experiencing the fullness of creation, I think I'm ready at this point to um, achieve Buddhahood and let go of my addiction to creation and return to the spiritual emptiness or the non-duality, the void. Mm -hmm. I think I'm ready to do that. What they do, because we're all connected, what these people or these avatars do is they um, raise and level everybody else up so that they level up all humanity, all creations, all universes, all dimensions, all archangels. They level everyone up and they kind of save everyone from a lower reality. So, um, you know, and, you know, during um, Buddha's time, the level of consciousness of humanity was 90 when, you know, and he leveled it up. During Yeshua's time, it was 120. When he achieved um, the avatar status, he leveled up even more. And I think um, Dr. Hawkins measured the level of humanity um, we, before he died, and it was at 207. So there was a couple more avatars that leveled it up. And we're just, you know, if a couple people get to the point where they're ready to return to the void, it will level us up even more. So it's kind of like uh, when the, like we have archangels up here and all these different things, when the person at the bottom, the little low level human decides to, okay, I'm thinking I'm ready to return home. It brings everybody up, everybody up. And, um, and that's the golden age that I spoke of in the intro. Then when we all get to that point, we bring in this golden age or where does that fit in the thousand years of, peace or whatever and I, I do want to mention here though because I, I love bringing up a Mandela effect in case people haven't heard but Jesus spoke about this thousand years this golden age and uh, the lion shall lie down with the lamb which is now the wolf will dwell with the lamb in the Bible so if you guys remember that scripture the lion and the lamb look it up it's changed Isaiah eleven six. okay so what is this peaceful era is this this is beyond duality this is when we finally yeah. achieve this unity consciousness yeah, so this 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 new cycle is is unity consciousness. It's the crystalline consciousness where where we're all connected, uh, and we see our connection in each other. And because we change our energy and our perspective on on our separatist belief systems about each other and about things and about the cosmology of the whole cre of the whole creation that we're all connected, um, we change our um, the way that we act and the things and the way that we live our life. 
And so we start, you know, contributing, um, you know, more of the positive into our life and around with everybody else. And what that does is just starts changing the reality that we have. So we start, um, we, over time, we start having more, um, you know, help, organic, healthful foods that are higher radiating. We create technology that is much more feasible to the environment and helpful for everybody. Um, it's not just about greed and trying to make the most money because in this new reality, the most money you have is not going to be what people measure you at. It's going to be, was that person integrous? When push came to shove, did that person do the right thing? And I'll give you an example. Like I am a writer, and so I write, you know, blogs for different things. And I wrote a blog on um, for LinkedIn for a friend on discrimination and retaliation as it being a more common thing than discrimination, and that you can prove retaliation. And I did some research, and I used some people's experience in that um, blog article I wrote for LinkedIn. And I had people call me thanking me for using, uh, and honestly, their example. But they were so afraid for me that it, that I was going to be, um, it was going to hurt me adversely for writing that article, even though nobody made me write the article. I did it just because it was the right thing to do. So when nobody is making you do something, there's no fear behind it. There's no reward behind it. Will you still do the right thing because that's who you are? That's mm. how you're going to re be remembered in this, um, this cycle. It's really moving from the selfish type of a mentality to a service to others and an empathetic. And we got lots of empaths in our group, by the way. But they feel that energy from others. They feel the sorrow and the pain. And sometimes it's even hard to sort of detach from that and it pulls them down as well. But, you know, if we're living in a society where everybody's em uh, empathic, empathetic, then that right there is going to lead to more of a service to others because if everybody on the planet is looking out for you then you don't have to look out for yourself you can look out for everyone else and then no one has to be serviced to self at that point because yeah. people aren't doing things for greed <laughs> exactly and you know um like only 22 um percent of society is actually integrous which is a good barometer for um you know seeing and, and knowing truth um and measuring like does this person talk walk their talk or is it just all talk you know um th does this person's action actually reflect um courage and integrity do they um you know is their word good so anyways 22 percent of society is integrous which is actually really good for the most part but the other 78 percent is working on um kind of living in a higher vibration and being integrous and courageous um and you can do that in a lot of different ways like if you like i said like if you are um in business and you're a carpenter you're you're doing the best work that you can and being integrous by using good materials and by charging appropriately but still competitively by um being um, you know, outright with disclaimers and all that kind of stuff. So, so that you have a good fiduciary commitment to your customers and you're mm -hmm. taking care of them and looking out for them. Um, if you are like, um, you know, work in the restaurant industry, you're, you're washing your hands every single time and you're right. not, you're not, you're not, you're not um, being lazy about washing your hands or having good sanitation. And when you're cooking, you're paying attention um, and you're making the best reflection of who you are and being integrous with the work that you do and the, the, the nutrition that you give to people. Um, you know, like if you are, um, like a computer programmer, for instance, I get some programmers and many of the programmers that I, I get in their past lives were monks. And so they're just basically through cellular memory, infusing their interest in metaphysics into the games that they create. And so, um, you know, that's why a lot of the video games that are kind of metaphysical are really hitting it right on the nail. <laughs> yeah, they do. And it's amazing. It's like, wow, who's that's making cool. this? <laughs> There's some things I heard about in a game before I even realized it through spirituality or, you know, studying that. I'm like, wow, that game was talking about that a long time ago. I need to go that's figure out what. Right on the yeah. ball. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But they are, um, when they're creating it, they're not cutting corners and they're infusing the best um, of themselves, expression of themselves into a game to make the best, most integrous product that they possibly can. So that people who have that experience come back. Cause you know, when you love something so much, you keep coming back to it over and over again, you never get bored and, and sick of it. Um, and that's what they're doing. And so, you know, different, so 
when you live at a higher frequency, you realize that spirituality is not really put in a box. Um, it's not put into a, um, a building or a religion or a faith system or whatever system it is. Everything is spiritual. Everything is a hologram. Everything is a, is a re reflection of who you are and a reflection of the, the overall creation of the one universal mind. And when you see that, basically what you're seeing is when whether you are um, just a gardener and you decide to, um, because you have an abundance of um, food that you grow in your yard and you can't eat it all, so maybe you just put it into a wheelbarrow and put it out in the front and say, help yourself, and the neighbors right. will go and help it. That's being integrous with your abundance as well. So there's a lot of different ways. But basically what, what, what it, what's happening is that when people of high frequency um, – kind of blow the box of spirituality out and see it's part of everything that they do. Um, everything that they do becomes a reflection of who they are. So everything that they create, every experience that they create, every communication they create is a reflection of who they are and it calibrates really high. Um, so like in Dr. Hawkins' work, I mean, just um, like uh, The Lion King and um, Toy Story was at, I think, like 400 um, because the people that created that um, work were putting a piece of their consciousness into that. And so that's why it calibrates really high. Charles Dickens, um, a lot of his books calibrate at four, almost 500, I think it is. I'm not sure the exact number, but very high. Um, people love the, you know, a lot of Charles Dickens books like A Christmas Carol and they can watch it over and over and over again and never get sick of it because its caliber is really high. Um, so there's a lot of different ways we can infuse our level of consciousness in the things that we do and the things that we create and that we do when we bring metaphysics and bring a little bit of that spirit inside of that frequency that you emit into the things that you do, other people can feel that. Like, I love listening to the wedding march from Pacabo from the Canon D, and that is very high frequency. I think that's like almost five or so hundred, and um, it, it makes you cry so much sometimes because it's so beautiful. And, it, you know, Pacabo had his awakening, and he tried to infuse that energy from the spirit side into writing the music. Mm -hmm. so as you were saying earlier, you know, like, Luke, how can you, how can you in your everyday kind of get into this gamma wave frequency where you're, you're touching the spirit side and you're, you know, you're, you know, you're raising your consciousness. So um, meditation, for example, transcendental meditation is a really good way. But meditation is really any, any exercise that you do in which you stop thinking. So, you know, the, the brain will is part of the ego and it will always be thinking and, 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 and trying to come up with new ways to out, out cut itself. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just stop the monkey mind. So meditation is a way to stop the, the running mind uh, and it puts you into a gamma wave frequency. Um, just being grateful for, you know, having the ability to be a human at this time and to have the ability to raise up everybody else and offset negativity you know that's the thing to be grateful for there's a lot of things in your life to be grateful for and being grateful also changes your brain frequency to a gamma ray as well and gamma ray is the is the energy when you're in hypnosis when you're talking to the oversoul or having energy healing so um if you are a musician a lot of musicians don't really sit there when they're in the music and they're, you know, working on the music and playing the music. They're not thinking about all these other things going on in their mind. It's completely mm -hmm. empty. It's like empty. Um, same thing if you're a artist or you like to paint or garden. You just focus. You're just sitting there focusing on, oh, I'm gonna red on here and that blue on here. You're not thinking about all these other things that are going on in your mind. That's meditation. Those are the activities that put you in that gamma wave frequency. Um, and if you want to manifest even faster, when your brain is in that gamma ray frequency where you're, you're open to the spirit world, um, you could insert 
what you're focused on. So if you're focused on having a good job interview, if you're doing your meditation exercise, let's say your meditation exercise is playing music or doing art, um, but then you focus on the outcome of I'm going to have a good interview, it's going to be, you know, whatever, and you just focus on that while you're doing your, your art, it will happen. Because that's you the manifestation. The that's the code of the matrix. Right. One thing I've noticed, it's come through a bunch that it's almost all the sessions and across the board, any practitioners I talk to, it's like they're told, you know, people need to do more art. You need to do more of your art and because people neglect those things. But that's exactly why, because it gets you into this gamma wave that you're talking about. And it, mm -hmm. that's where your greatest intuition comes from, too. That's it's like you rise above all the chaos that's going on in your life. And you can hear more clearly from your higher self saying, you know, just intuitive ideas or, or what have you. And it just yeah. seems like that's super important for everyone across the board. And, yeah. you know, for anybody that can't get a QHHT session, just know that's one of your answers that would come back is to yeah. do your art, do your music, do your whatever it is that you do. that whatever gets you in that Whatever your meditation state. is, whatever your meditation is, it's because um, the thing is, is that. You know, like when you pray, all you're doing is you're asking for stuff from from the universal mind. Please give me this. Please do that. Please watch over this. You're asking. You're making demands. But when you um, when you are in meditation and you completely empty your mind, um, and whether your meditation that gets you into transcendental states of consciousness is through meditation itself or through gardening or painting or drawing or um, even listening to music or making music, you know, whatever your meditation that stops your brain from thinking and gets you into that higher transcendental gamma wave frequency, um, that that is going to keep you healthy and is going to continue to manifest um, a greater reality for you. So it's a good everyday thing to do for yourself. Yeah, I've heard that about the health too. People's health completely turning around once they got into that higher vibe. It actually brought their health up with it. Yeah, and and that's and they they have learned that through consciousness research and mindfulness research 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 as well. That art therapy, music therapy, really helps people stay healthier. And so when you're in like cancer research, they will recommend you to um, take some art classes at the hospital or some music classes or some yoga classes just to try to get you into a transcendental mindset so that you're not focusing on your illness, but you reset your, your whole programming. It's very good. Yeah. And that's a message that everybody can take away from this because we want to shift. We want to go through this narrow doorway, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, and the thing is, is that, um, you know, what the Oversoul really wants everybody to know, and, and this comes across in, in my research from the last 20 years in metaphysics, in academia, in my um, 40 years of Buddhism background. Uh, the thing is, is that, um, you know, whether you're in the third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, whatever it is, whether you're in this reality, that reality, whatever it is, nothing is better or worse than anybody. It's just you're going to be where you are supposed to be. Um, and you're going to get exactly what you're supposed to get. And you're going to evolve. And if you go through that fun, you know, I got to say something that for some people who might want to go to the final doorway, ego is definitely going to challenge you. Okay. So ego does not want to die. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really good tool so that you can have your individual experience. Like, well, wouldn't you want to experience Star Trek reality? What wouldn't you want to experience like the higher dimensions, you know? <laughs> And that's fine too. And you know, I get a lot of star seeds or people who have had incarnations in other realities, elementals, and other things who are here just to, um, just to learn what this is all about. But um, your ego is going to challenge you through negative manifestations to bring up all your crud so that you can address it. Um, and it's also going to kind of challenge you to challenge um, your character to see if you're integrous and to see, you know, if you really are. Um, you know, solid all the way through. So it, one, one of the things that take down the energy of a lot of gurus and a lot of um, really highly evolved people is everybody wants to do good for other people. So it will use your weakness to help people. 
Mm -hmm. um, against you. Like, well, if you just stay behind, you can have all this power and wealth and you could help all these people here, um, you know, live better life and with less suffering. But it's artificial because if you truly love somebody, then you are going to respect their journey and respect the things that they have for themselves and let them walk their own journey so that they can experience and grow on their own um, instead of artificially making them do something because um, it is not real. And so that's how the ego, it will, it will kind of use some of your, um, your strengths against you to see um, if you can see the wisdom behind that. Um, it, you know, so it's really hard to let go of that, that ego identity. But, <laughs> you know, since we all exist infinitely through the eons, there is no rush to return to the spiritual emptiness um, of the universal, you know, mind uh, and consciousness. But if you do get to that point, uh, if you're hearing this message, at some point in your incarnation, in your existence, you will return home and you will let go of your addiction to the fullness of creation. Very good message. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for being on. We got to start having you back regularly. I really, I always enjoy the talk. People in the chat are enjoying it so much. Um, do you have anything? Oh, I, I do want to mention that um, Vaughn has her uh, YouTube channel going up, going now. She got up right after she was on the last time, so I didn't have her link the last time. So, do check in the uh, description box below and subscribe to her channel. She's also got her website. I've got it right there on the screen under her name, MerkabaChakras.com as you see there. And uh, I think we've got your Facebook down there as well, don't we? Or yeah, your author's page yeah. for your books. My author's page. And you know, the thing is, is that, um, y you know, like I, I, I usually don't like to be in the, the limelight or anything like that because I try to avoid spiritual ego. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, spiritual narcissism, intellectual narcissism, these, these are real things as well and that will lower your frequency. Um, um, but I am going to, you know, contribute a little bit of um, and get this information out because it, it will help people because whenever Earth spikes her, um, her energy, pe more people are going to awaken and going to you know kind of being deja vu like what, what's going on i don't this you know they're they're gonna need some help so when you see some of those people who are like i need to talk to you I have something weird that happened this and this and i remember this and this you know so they'll have a little bit i think i'm going crazy or i think i need to go see a mental health doctor or something so more people are going to have awakenings um every time she does a spike and so, um, so, you know, help those people out as well. But, you know, in all my sessions, um, the Oversoul always says the same thing to my clients. And so I put that message into these four or five sentences that I always close out with. Um, and what the Oversoul really wants everybody to know at this time is that, that you, you've always been enough. You've always been enough and use the gifts and resources all around you to create the life that you want to experience a life full of joy and love and the spirit world will nudge you through synchronicity so you can do it um that's really what the oversoul wants everybody to know so start doing it and life will be you know actually much more fun when you start creating with um your soul groups Absolutely. I think one of the things that I've, I've been hearing a lot, even within our community, is just the intensity of the anxiety some people have been feeling with these energies. Um, and then people that have no idea that aren't in these communities, but they know people in these communities, they'll chime in. They're like, I've got people that I know that it's just been so intense. They're going to their doctor and trying to get on anti-anxiety meds and things like this because they've never experienced it before. So they feel like it's just them. But everyone's dealing with this, even people within our community that sort of get wrapped up in their day to day or whatever. But, you know, back to what we were saying about sort of engaging that meditative. I've noticed that when I get into that stage, if I start feeling that anxiety and I just take some uh, conscious breaths to stop what I'm doing and just breathe in really deep and just try to it, that that turns into a very positive feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of anxiety, it starts feeling like really energetic and good. Yeah. So. You know, no. <laughs> we're all animals, and like in the animal kingdom, when an animal feels anxiety of some kind of impending 
natural disasters going to happen soon, animals start going to the water and swimming. Mm. Or they start going to to the they start going to find food and they just start sitting there eating fruit. <laughs> they, they go do things that they that they love. Or like your dog, if they just feel like some anxiety come up, they'll go and they'll go and find the person they love the best and just want to be pet and hugged. Right, you lay know? on their lap or something. Yeah, that's their meditation. So mm-hmm. animals do that. And when we feel that anxiety or we feel uneasiness in our life or anything else, instead of having a panic attack and trying to force it, just go and um, go and find the activity that, that puts you into that meditative trans- transcendental um, mm-hmm. frequency and, and get those good vibes from those gamma waves. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and if you have an abundance of energy, put music on and just dance around and let it out that way. <laughs> yeah, I'll go work out. Sometimes, you know, working out will kind of yeah. help, you know, release some of those dense energy as well. So there's lots of different ways in which you can address your anxiety because we are kind of animals as well. So yeah. it's a cue from the animal kingdom. They do it and we should too. Definitely. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Vaughn. It's always wonderful to have you on. We'll have you back soon. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Lots of love and light, you guys in the chat and watching later. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Be sure to check out the website at UOTF.net. There you will find the live stream schedule displayed in your local time right there on the front page. Below that, you'll find links to take the Beyond Quantum Healing course at a discounted rate. Purchase our book, Mandela Effect, Friend or Foe, in paperback or ebook, or to contact me to schedule a BQH session. At the top of the site, you'll find links to help support the work I do, access the free private forum where you can discuss organizing get togethers in your area, Mandela Effects, and more. Thank you all so much for being here. Mm-hmm.